Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent. We light our candle of peace and in a special way we pray for peace within ourselves, peace in our families and our communities, and especially for peace in our country and in the rest of the world. It is in, and today we are also reminded that the ancient, of the ancient promises that are going to be fulfilled here and now. Together with John the Baptist, let us be ready and prepare the way of the Lord. May we acknowledge our sinfulness and our pride and be pure and blameless for the day of the Lord is near at hand. We also pray in a special way for our sisters and brothers who suffer from AIDS and also our handicapped brethren. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias was tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And as it, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding road shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Sisters and brothers, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In last week's gospel, our Lord himself exhorts us to stay awake, and he warns us, beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life, and that they catch you by surprise like a trap. In other words, he warns us not to fall into the trap of the false security that the world offers us. When things happen around us and it seems like it's the end of the world, we might find security in the, what the world has to offer us. Like security in our possessions, wealth, power, and fame. But what Jesus is telling us, find security in me alone. Because when all these things happen, I shall come to save you. But we often, but we know that it is very difficult. It is very difficult to stay awake. It is very difficult to wake up from the sleep of sinfulness. And, 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 and Augustine himself, in, in, his, in his confessions of St. Augustine, he says, I, I want to wake up, Lord. I want to wake up, and I know waking up is good, and you yourself have called me to be awake and to be alive. Pero Lord, ang hirap talagang magbago. Ang hirap-hirap at ang sarap-sarap matulog. Pag ginising mo ako, babalik lang ako sa pagtulog. And, what, and, 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 and we know how difficult that is. We know how difficult it is to change and to turn our back on our sins. We just have to look at ourselves when we go to confession. Diba, pagpunta natin sa confession, meron tayong mga favorite sins, yung mga, mga kasalanan na paulit-ulit natin, kinukumpisal sa pare, no? Siguro, nag-iiba-iba pa tayo ng pare kasi pare-pareho yung kasalanan natin. Because it is really very difficult to change. And for many of us, we know the experience of let, even if somebody gives us an insight or feedback on a weakness or, an, or, or, or a sinfulness of ours, how do we react? 
Sometimes we feel so offended. We feel that our egos are held or our self-esteem disappears whenever somebody points out our sinfulness. Nakakahiya, nagkasala ako. It's as if that it's as if that being perfect is part of our nature. But we know that our nature is imperfection, not perfection. And yet we are offended. And so, when the Lord rouses up or wakes us up and tells us to stay awake, anong sagot natin? Just like Augustine, we say, we tell the Lord, soon, soon, leave me for a little while. Pero sabi ni Augustine, but soon, soon, had no present. And my little while went on for a long while. Kaya nga, paulit-ulit tayo sa ating mga kasalanan. Indeed, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, for us ordinary mortals, change is just too difficult and we often, our doubt, we, we often doubt our ability to change. But today, but today, our readings, there are four voices. Four voices speak in our readings today. And they, are, they encourage the people to imagine. Imagine the good future that God has in store for them. They all invite us to imagine the best that we can be, the best that can be, and then to act towards that end. For example, the prophet Baruch in today's first reading tells Jerusalem to take off your robe of mourning and misery, put on the splendor of glory from God forever. God will show all the earth and your splendor. And God will lead us in joy by the light of His glory with His mercy and justice for company. In other words, Baruch tells Jerusalem, dress up appropriately and have courage and face the future because the Lord will deliver, deliver you from your present shame and misery because they, were, they were, went in exile. That, that the Lord will deliver, deliver you from the shame and misery of exile and bring you to your own land and save you. Today's psalm has the same theme. Today's psalm exhorts us to see the great things that the Lord has done that we may be filled with joy. And the psalmist tells, reminds Jerusalem, although we go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, we shall come back rejoicing, carrying our harvest. That yes, Israel will go into exile weeping, but the people of God Israel will soon be restored and be saved by the Lord, and therefore they will soon rejoice. The third voice, the voice of Paul, who tells the Philippians how we always praise with joy for all the help that they have given him in his mission. And he expresses his confidence in this that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. That the Lord who has created you will continue to create and recreate you so that you can become better and better and better. And finally, the voice of John the Baptist in today's gospel. Using the words of Isaiah, he proclaims this message. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding road shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. All flesh shall, shall see the salvation of God. And note this. Luke starts his gospel by mentioning so many powerful worldly leaders. He mentions Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, Herod, Philip, Lysanias, Annas, and Caiaphas. And, these, and some of these powerful people were the ones who put Jesus to death. One who allowed Jesus to die. But what does, what, 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 what does Isaiah say or what does John preach through the words of Isaiah? 
that the power of the Lord will prevail over any earthly power and that everyone shall see the salvation of God. So do not worry. You have a great future ahead of you. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, none of these four voices brutally accuses us of our sinfulness that will only deepen our helplessness and worsen our hopelessness. The heart of the message of each of these four voices is this, that there is hope, hope that encourages us to change, to change our ways and to accept the love and mercy of God that will lead us to perfection. In other words, we are all invited to imagine the best that God has in mind for us and give this best the opportunity to change our lives for the better. Because the Lord has something great in store for us. Believe that. Today's readings remind us that people begin to change whenever they are encouraged to see the best in themselves instead of dwelling in the worst in themselves. We are invited to remember that simply telling people what is wrong with, with what is wrong with them will simply leave them frustrated and with, with their weaknesses and sinfulness with no one to care whether they change or not. Hindi pwedeng i-point out lang natin ang kasalanan. What is required? We are also reminded of that all of that that the help that all of us need help and encouragement to change. Kasi nga mahirap magbago. We all need help and encouragement. And how can we help and encourage each other? We can point out we can help each other see the good that the Lord has created us to be. That, we, that we, we can help each other move towards excellence if we can imagine the excellent me that the Lord has made me to be. We need to help each other in imagining ourselves differently and imagining all the goodness we have within ourselves. Imagine all the goodness you have within yourselves which the Lord asks us to give birth to this world. That the world is waiting for goodness to be born and it is all within us. We just have to see that. We need to take time to envision the kind of person God has conceived us to be, the best version of ourselves as many would put it. We need to have faith that the Lord continues to create and recreate us and recreate us until we become what He has conceived us to be from the beginning of time. And in the words of Paul, let us believe that the one who has begun the good work in us will continue to complete it until the last day. And so, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, in this second week of Advent, we light the candle of peace. We relight the candle of hope and light the candle of peace the peace that we hope to receive whenever we look at ourselves, whenever we look at each other with the mind and the heart and the eyes of God, who never tires of hoping and waiting and working towards that day when we will finally be the best creation that He has imagined us to be. Amen. And as usual for your homework before I give the final blessing, Cardinal Newman said, to be human is to change, to be perfect is to have changed often. And we know that change is very difficult to come, change within ourselves, even change in society. And therefore, we really need to help each other. As is said in the letter to the Hebrews, we must consider how to rouse one another to love and good works. We should not stay away from our assembly as is the custom of some, but encourage one another, and this all the more as you see the day drawing near. 
So we need to encourage one another and not stay away from each other. Because often, we fail to challenge each other. Kasi yung iba, nasasaktan, no? Pag you point out their sinfulness or their weaknesses or their faults, hindi nila matanggap kasi kailangan perfect ako. Eh hindi naman pwede yon, di ba? So nasasaktan sila, yung ego nila nasasaktan. So yung iba naman, hindi na lang magsasabi. Kasi masasaktan, ayaw nilang makasakit. So kung walang nagsasabi, hindi nyo malalaman, wala kayong gagawin. And you will continue to live in your weakness and in your sin. Which is not what the Lord wants. So how do we do it? You, I, for your homework, I'd like you to do two things. First, think of a weakness that you have that you feel that the Lord is waking you up from. No, ano bang kahinaan yan or sinfulness that you have? And you pray for the grace that you will be open to encouragement open to be challenged, open to the help that people will give you for you to be able to overcome, overcome that weakness. And the second thing is that also you look at the people you live with, the people you work with, and just choose one person whom you want to help with love by pointing out the weakness. Remember, if no one points out the weakness to a person, the person will go bad, and if the person goes bad, you are partly to be blamed. So let us encourage one another. Let us help one another. So that's your homework for the coming week.